me encontré con un hombre entonces que eh, contaba una experiencia sensacional, que supongo que igual le refiere ahora, cuando él trabajó para el cuartel general de los aliados, eh, de, el equivalente de la OTAN, la parte militar de la OTAN en París. Y eh, cuenta cómo él tuvo acceso a un memorándum, a un documento clasificado con un tipo de sello que no se había visto nunca, que se llamaba, bueno, no era top secret, era cosmic top secret, y que en ese documento se hablaba de la presencia de extraterrestres en la Tierra. Eh, Bob Dean ha mantenido su testimonio a lo largo de los años, han pasado ya pues, muchos años desde aquel primer encuentro y muchos más desde que hizo sus primeras declaraciones. Y hoy ha acudido aquí a esta cumbre europea de exopolítica para seguir manteniendo su testimonio y para presentarnos una conferencia que tiene un título intrigante. ¿Por qué el relato más impactante de la historia humana no ha sido contado jamás? Yo espero que responda esa pregunta y que nos cuente cuál es ese relato más importante de la historia humana. Demos la bienvenida a Robert Ning. I hope I can be heard. Is this coming through just fine? <laughs> yeah. Good. Before I begin, I would like to say a couple of words of deep appreciation for the sponsors and the people who have put this program together. I have been involved in speaking publicly all over the planet and all over the United States. I've been conferences here, I've been at conferences there, and I know how terribly difficult it can be to put a program like this together. And I have to say, I have disrespect and admiration for the people who've done this. Most of all, I respect their courage for dealing with a subject like this, where most of the elite leadership and the power groups of the world want this subject to go away. And these courageous young men who have put this together are brave and they deserve my respect and your admiration. And I want to say I thank you because I know what you've been through. <clears throat> Now I must explain something else to you. I never read from a script. I don't have a prepared script to follow. I get up on a stage and I talk to people like yourselves and I kind of wing it. I have so much material and I have such a problem of keeping it under the allotted time that I've been given. I have come to date prepared to speak to you for three hours. I'm only allowed one hour and 15 minutes. So something's going to have to give. But bear with me, I'll do the damnedest job I can. And it's important that you see the photographs of the NASA pictures that I have brought with me. Now, my journey began 45 years ago. I began a journey that if I had known then what I know now, If I had known the pain, the anguish, the heartbreak that I was going to experience over those 45 years, I might not have started that journey at all. But here I am in Barcelona in 2009 with some of the most delightful people I have ever met. And looking back, I find that the journey was worth the effort. It was worth the pain. It was worth the heartbreak. And I'm delighted to be here. And I'm delighted to see all of you out there. And this is such an encouragement to me that people are beginning to demand the truth. They know they've been lied to from the very beginning. And they want to know And I'm going to hear this afternoon, hopefully, contribute one small measure 
to helping you understand and helping you know. Most of my adult life, or most of my first part of my adult life, I was a professional soldier. I was in the Army. I joined the Army in 1950 to avoid the draft. Ended up going to Officers Candidate School, and so help me God, while I was going to OCS at Fort Riley, Kansas, the North Koreans invaded South Korea, and the next thing I know, I'm on the front lines of Korea being shot at by a bunch of pissed off Chinese and North Koreans who tried to kill me. And I had nothing against them. You know, I didn't want to kill them. Here I am, 1951, leading combat troops in Korea in one of the bloodiest wars we have ever had. And uh, the rest, I guess you could say, is history. <clears throat> I, left combat, I led combat troops in Korea in 1951. I spent 27 years on active duty, and I also in, was involved in the war in Southeast Asia in 1970, where I was part of an organization that gathered intelligence in the jungles of Southeast Asia, South Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. And let me tell you, some of those years were uh, rather harrowing. The most harrowing experience I was to have was when I was assigned to Paris, France in 1963 to what we considered in those days a plush assignment, a plum assignment. I was able to go to Paris, France, take my family with me, and my children went to high school in And uh, as I said, it was a plum assignment. I had no idea what I was to find when I got there. When I arrived in the summer of 1963, I arrived with a top secret clearance. When I arrived at Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers in Europe, which was at, located at that time at a small town known as Rochencourt, right outside of Paris, my security clearance was upgraded to cosmic top secret which was then and still is today the highest level of security classification that NATO has. I had to have a cosmic top secret clearance to work in shock, Supreme Headquarters Operations Center, the war room. I was a senior master sergeant at the time, and when I was assigned in shock, I was given the job of maintaining the duty rosters. We worked on a 24-hour basis, day after day after day. And I was given the job of running the duty rosters, and I worked in shock. And, and back in those days, let me tell you, the war rooms were somewhat primitive. You've seen pictures today, I'm sure, of the control centers of most major installations, like SAC in Colorado Springs. Everything is electronic. Everything is demonstrated on the wall, extensions just like this beautiful stuff here. Back in those days, we had teletype, we had field telephones, and if we wanted something on the display, we had to go up and take a pin and put it on the wall and show the controllers where this division was, where that Soviet regiment was, and so on and so on. Very primitive. When I arrived in the summer of 1963, I heard rumors about a study that was underway. Now, it interested me, interested me because the study was about UFOs. And I was intrigued by that possibility, you know. I was curious about UFOs, had no idea then what they were, what they represented. 